All right, well, it is uh, 410, so uh, let's get started. So we are very happy to introduce Alejandro Morales from uh, University of Massachusetts, uh, speaking to us today about factorization problems in complex reflection groups. Take it away. Um, uh, th thank you everyone for the introduction and uh, thank you everyone and thank you uh, Sarah for the invitation. I'm uh, very happy to talk uh, and um, I hope everyone is well in this difficult time. So, uh, so this is a uh, um, joint work with uh, Joel Lewis um, and uh, um, uh, yeah, we was at the University of Washington. So, uh, okay, so please stop me if you have any questions um, and I'll, I'll be checking the chat, yes, okay. So just to uh, maybe get us uh, started, uh, we'll start with an easy problem. So, um, oh, somehow this is not, oh, maybe I need to put, um, uh, okay, well, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, if I do full screen, maybe, uh, is that better? There's something, yeah, try it like that, but there is something about funny about Zoom. So either the space bar or the arrow keys or the mouse might work for you. Okay, is that, um, as, as? It looked like it was working. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, okay, so just to get started maybe, um, yeah, so we just, uh, so warmer. So if, if you solve this problem, you'll get a Fields Medal. Uh, but uh, there's a bit of a, a caveat, you have to start with a Fields Medal, someone else's Fields Medal. So in 2014, in the ICM, um, they, they, uh, they so, so, so it was a great year for a lot of firsts. So, so uh, I think, so first uh, women Fields Medalist, the late Mariam Mizrakani, the first, I'm from Latin America, so the first Latin American Fields Medalist, Artur Avila. Um, I think there were two, also two Canadians, Um but, uh, but there was this quote in this profile of, 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 of Mariam Mizarkani that uh, when they did, when they gave the medals, they, they realized that the medals were engraved. So they gave the, the they, they doled them out incorrectly. So, um, so Manjul, I think Varjo is speaking that he got Martins uh, and Martins received Mariam's, uh, Mariam's received Arthur's and Arthur received so, so it's very, so he said it is very unlikely, even if this was distributed randomly. So, um, and I have to say that I, this is a picture from the internet of this fields, this lost fields medal from, from, from 2018. Uh, uh, so, um, so after the fields medals are announced, they, you know, they, they think they each, I mean, they, 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 they're, it, it's maybe one of the last times they're together because they're going to be like in, with their own groups. So it's hard to solve this problem. So, um, so um, Manjul and Mariam knew each other from, I think, from from contests, and I think they they were they they, they saw each other in the corridors, but they realized that they didn't have each other's medals. Uh, but they still thought that it was better if they exchanged them to solve this problem. So so they exchanged their medals, and and then maybe I don't know if this is how it happened later, but uh, let's say that Mariam met um, Martin. So sorry, Martin later they could exchange medals, and now uh, Martin would have his medal, and 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 Mariam would have her medal. And then hopefully uh, Artur uh, and, and Manjul could meet and exchange their medals. And then now everyone gets their final medal. So they had one more problem to solve before they could get their medals. Um, so, so what happened here really is that, so everyone got their, uh, each other, well, got different medals. And here we actually had a perfect, like a four cycle. So one goes to two, say two goes to three, three goes to four. And each of these exchanges is a transposition. And, uh, and then what they knew is that the, the, the shortest number of uh, transpositions you need to, uns to unscramble this is, is, uh, is, is three. So for, for an n cycle, you need n minus one transpositions. Okay, so this is one of the possible solutions. So now let's say that we want to count the number of factorizations of the long cycle, one up to n into n minus one transpositions. Um, so for example, for n equals three, there's uh, three ways of doing it with two transpositions. Here they are. Um, and uh, and in general, uh, and this is a theorem of all, dating all the way back to Hurwitz, the number of factorizations here is n to the n minus two, and this number counts uh, tree like trees with with vertices one up to n. Um, and there's a beautiful uh, double counting proof by Dinesh, who you saw in, in Graham's defense. It was mentioned in Graham's defense a few weeks ago. Um, and there's also uh, bijective proofs, say one by Moskowski and uh, also Golden and Young. So a bijection with, between these factorizations and trees with vertices one up to n. Um, okay, so that's one factorization problem into transpositions. Let's look at the one we saw in the pre-seminar for those who were there. If you want to count factorizations of the cycle one goes to two all the way goes to n, 
into two factors and there and it's minimal and minimal is that you actually need and that the, the two factors have in total n plus one cycles this is the catalan number um, so now let's call apq the number of minimal factorizations into two factors u and v well the, if the first one has p cycles and it's minimal the other one has to have n plus one minus p cycles and uh, and this number uh, is given by the Narayana number. So it also has a product formula. So, uh, and this is a refinement. If you add these over all P, you get the Catalan numbers. And uh, and these these uh, Narayana numbers, they count, uh, one, they count several things. One of them that they count is um, uh, bipartite rooted trees with P vertices of one kind and Q vertices of the other kind. And, there, and here is a bijection between these trees and the factorizations. So, um, I don't, yeah, so here uh, the cyclic order around this vertex, for example, would tell you that you have a transposition three, four. Okay, so, so anyway, so there's a, there's a way to, to biject uh, to the factorizations. Okay, so, so a question in the chat uh, from Jake Levinson asking what a minimal factorization means. Yeah, that you have a, so, 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 so maybe uh, if, yes, yeah, so, so that you have the, 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 the smallest number of, of, of cycles, which in the, for two factors, it means that in total you have n plus one cycles. Um, if, you view, if you think of them as, as so in the pre-seminar, we talked that sometimes you can view um, factorizations as graphs embedded on surfaces. Um, it means if these graphs uh, have the smallest, if they're, if they're planar, if, they're, if, if they have the smallest possible genus. I, I hope, does that answer the question? Uh, so, so you can get, for example, you can get, uh, you can get this magical number n plus one if you take kind of vertices minus edges plus faces equals equals one. Okay, so we've talked the two cases of minimal factorizations that have product formulas into transpositions and of two factors um, you know, with uh, n plus one cycles. But if we drop the minimal condition, um, so say that I now want to count factorizations of the long cycle into k transpositions, but it doesn't have to be n minus one, the smallest number. So n minus one is this, gives you this minimal number. Uh, and if you just count it for arbitrary length, if you put these numbers into an exponential generating series, um, it has this really nice, nice formula. So, so there's no, for arbitrary k, there's no nice formula for, for this number, t and k, but there is this really nice generating function. Uh, and this was proved by Jackson using irreducible characters of the symmetric group. Uh, an approach introduced to factorizations in, 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 in this Stanley paper of 1981 um, that uh, we, it was mentioned by, by Graham Sinsis a few weeks ago. Okay, that's for transpositions. Now let's look at the one of factorizing the long cycle into two factors, but now they don't have to be n plus one cycles, they have to be p and q. Um, so he, th here is this like magical, so this, so minimal would be when g is zero. Okay, and, um, and in general, p plus q at n plus one minus, so n plus one minus p minus q is even, and it's kind of, gives you this genus of some surface where you embed these, you can embed these factorizations, for example. Um, so so uh, Alain Goupil and Gilles Schaeffer have this positive formula for this number. Okay, so remember when it's minimal, you have these Narayana numbers. In general, there is this formula, so let's examine it. So it's a positive formula, that's very nice. But let's see, you're summing over ways of, uh, like G, there's G terms here. And each of these PGs are summing over partitions. So they have um, super polynomially many terms. Okay. So um, I mentioned the pre seminar, I cannot give you a nice formula. If you want a positive formula, this is maybe the best you can do in terms of, okay. So, so it got really complicated if you look down. Okay. And the proof uses the irreducible characters, the first proof. And in their paper, they have this line that after this long proof of characters, they encourage the reader to pause and enjoy a lighter activity such as bird watching and gardening. And yeah. um, so I, I did that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, I, I put a bird feeder in my, my backyard and I, uh, um, yeah, sorry, I'm getting a little bit. Uh, yeah, and uh, this happened. So sorry, the video is, is maybe I should move here, but. Uh, yeah, so anyways, so, okay, so maybe, but I, I really like that quote on that paper. Uh, uh, okay, 
So, uh, okay, so, and, but there's a bijective proof by, uh, of this formula by Chapuy, Ferry, and Fuzzi. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, but if you put a generating function, if you put these coefficients in a generating fun in a generating polynomial, x to the p, y to the q, and you change the basis from x to the p to x choose r, you get out these really nice coefficients, these, bi this, these binomial coefficients. So um, if you view this generating polynomial in a nice way, you can get you can you can get a you can get a nice expression to this. Um, okay, so. And the proof, the first proof used the irreducible characters and there's bijective proofs by Gilles Schaeffer and Ekaterina Vasilieva and, uh, and Olivier Bernardi has, I, I think, a very nice proof uh, using uh, tree rooted maps. So these graphs embedded on surfaces we, we mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, if you now have factorizations of the long cycle into K factors where you control the number of cycles of each factor, you have P1, P2, all the way to PK, then the transposition case is when you have K factors and each of them have n minus one cycles because that would, if your permutation has n minus one cycles, it's, it's a transposition. Um, so there is this like, so I'm gonna tell you what comes out of the generating function. Uh, so mn r1 up to rk counts is the following thing. So it counts tuples of sets, uh, of proper sets of one up to k. So I have n proper sets of one up to k and an rj just tells me how many sets contain j. So, so in that same paper, Jackson showed that this number of factorizations into k factors, when you change the basis from x to the p to x to something, out come these coefficients. So, they, so they're not, so they're, you would think maybe they're, because you have sets, tuples of sets, they're, they're multinomials, but they're not, they're not, they're, they're not uh, pairwise um, disjoint, uh, but it is what it is. So it's, it's counting these sets. Um, and uh, when you have two factors, you get this, this binomial from before because then they are disjoint. So, so, so this is what comes from the generating function. And I, and I want to tell you that this is a nice, very nice result. Um, so uh, I don't know, one way to think of these sets is for example, if you have, if n equals five, um, each, each column here is a set. So you have uh, one in the first set, you have two, four, uh, two, three, four, and so on. And then, um, the, the kind of the, the, the if you think of this if the rate the gray spots is ones the the row sums are these ri's so so one is on three on the sets four two is on four of the sets and so on okay so it's not so bad it's just sets um and uh, because they're sets you can kind of like forget about the last you can kind of um like uh condition on the last on the say the last set and uh and and so you get this nice recurrence um for if you have one fewer set, just, so this is a ET is like an indicator function, okay? So it's a, it's a recurrence with uh, exponentially many terms, um, but then it implies that whatever is happening when you're doing this change of basis, um, so here is counting, the red number is counting factorizations, here you change the basis. I'll tell you later what this is counting. Um, but these coefficients that he are here have this recurrence. So here is a, uh, a problem, prove this recurrence directly for these numbers. Um, so so, so if, if you were to do that, you would get a bijective proof of this result. So, um, the, 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 so again, the first, result, the, the first proof of Jackson here was using irreducible characters. There is a combinatorial proof that we did with Olivier Bernardi, but it was very involved. So here's a problem. Can you show this recurrence directly for these numbers, C? Um, and I'll tell you what they're counting in a, in a second. Okay, so as a summary, so minimal factorizations of a long cycle have product formulas. Um, if, uh, sorry, maybe you should, I think this maybe um, is, sorry, I guess uh, I'll, please ignore this at the moment, sorry. Uh, if you drop the minimal condition, uh, you get some nice formulas if you change basis. Okay. Um, so maybe just a quick summary of what is this um, map and character approach. Um, so the character approach has maybe at its heart this formula of Frobenius, and um, here is just the case for two factors. So you can count these factorizations by counting, by, by doing a character sum, a sum over irreducible characters of the symmetric group. And uh, 
and then you can go and calculate those and uh, and things are very nice when when you're factorizing a long cycle because the the, the characters are uh, you only have to consider certain characters so so it's it's a very nice um, approach and it's it's quite old but it keeps keeps working and um, you also so I mentioned on, on, on Graham's thesis a couple of weeks ago. The map approach is to view factorizations as these graphs embedded on surfaces. Um, and, uh, and one phase bipartite maps are in bijection with factorizations of a long cycle into two factors. So um, the, 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 with, with, you have n edges labeled one up to n and the, the cyclic order around the vertices of each color tell you the cycles of, of each of the factors. So we saw that, mentioned that a little bit on the pre-seminar. So it's just a flavor of what these maps are. We're not gonna talk too much about them. Um, um, so here is, uh, here is one that has genus one for factorizing one, two, three into two, in, into two three cycles. Um, so, so now I'm gonna tell you what these, when you change the basis, what are you doing? Um, and and here I'm gonna outline, um, what I think is maybe the best proof of this, of this, of this uh, result by Jackson. So think of x, y as being non-negative integers. And remember, APQ is counting factorizations of the long cycle where the first factor has p cycles, the second factor has q cycles. So then the left-hand side is counting factorizations where each cycle of the first factor is colored with a, num with a number in one up to x. And each cycle of the other factor is colored with a number one up to y. Is that, is that okay? And then when you change the basis to the binomial, is your, the, so CRS is counting factorizations with cycles colored, but now you know exactly how many colors you used. You use exactly R colors for the first factor, you used exactly S colors for the second factor. Okay, so, so this change of basis is just coloring the permutation. Okay, it's, okay, so, um, and then Olivier interpreted these colored factorizations as counting these maps, these graphs embedded on surfaces where you color the vertices. Um, and then because there's only one face, there is, there's like this kind of uh, Eulerian tour. So you can use this best theorem. That's why it's called the, the best proof <laughs> of, this is a theorem of, of Tat, uh, 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 yeah, and, 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 and Ehrenborg and, no, 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 not Nuremberg, but sorry, Tat, uh, Ehrenfest, and Smith, and I forgot the first person. Um, and and it, it tells you that you get a, span, a spanning tree, and, and then you can, and then he counted this, like, the thing you obtain at the end, and uh, this, I'm going through this quickly, but you can then count the object, and you get, uh, and, and you're able to get the final formula, okay? Um, so you have this character approach, that's very help. That's very that works. Uh, or you can do this kind of bijective manipulations with these graphs embedded on surfaces. Okay. So um, okay. So uh, so these learning functions seem to be, be nice when you change the basis. When you change the basis. So how about other groups? So uh, if you look at the general linear group over finite field, uh, Lewis, Reiner, Stanton looked at the analog of the reflection, the, the transposition case, uh, and we saw. We saw factorizations of, of, of this group on, on, on Graham's defense, um, but today we're going to focus on complex reflection groups. Okay. So, um, what are the analogs of this result? Um, if you take factor, if you factorize long cycle into transpositions uh, of length n minus one or arbitrary length, well, what if you factor a long cycle into two factors and you keep track of the cycles? Okay, what are the analogs of those two questions? Um, any questions for Okay, so we need to have a conversion table from the symmetric group to the complex reflection groups. So transpositions are gonna become reflections. The long cycle is gonna become something called a Coxeter element. Here we're keeping track of the number of cycles in the symmetric group, and that's gonna become fixed space dimension. And we're gonna see what is this change of basis that makes things kind of work. Okay, so um, we take a we, we take CN uh, and a ref, and a reflection is an element that fixes minus one, and a complex reflection group is a subgroup uh, generated by reflections. And key examples, for example, is the cyclic group, um, the symmetric group because a transposition. If you think of it, the permutation matrix is a is a, is a reflection. All finite Coxeter groups are 
are, 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 are examples of complex reflection groups. Um, and then there are these also these two infinite families, GD1N and GDDN, that I'll spend more time explaining. So, um, so GDRN is, is a group of monomial matrices. So these are n by n matrices whose support is a permutation matrix. All these entries are d roots of unity, which is this parameter here. And this R parameter is telling me that the product of all the entries is a D over R at the root of unity. So R better divide D. Okay. So if, if, if R is one, then I, I just, I, it's not telling me anything. It's just telling me that the product is a, a root of unity, which it is. So uh, one of the infinite families is GD1N. So here is just N by N matrices whose entries are D roots of unity. And that's just, the, that's also the read product of the cyclic group with, uh, with the symmetric group. And when D equals two, this is just sign permutations. When D equals one, this is just the symmetric group. So I, I get type B at D equals two. And GD1N has a subgroup when this R is D. So that's just telling me that I'm looking at these matrices where the product of all the entries is one because, because of D, D over D. And uh, at D equals two, this is the, the, the Coxer group of type D, so even sign permutations. So there is this classification for these complex reflection groups. So they're either isomorphic to one of these infinite families or 34 exceptional groups, which are which have different ranks. So there's a bunch of rank two, and they all go all the way to rank eight, where you have E8. Okay. So there's this classification for these complex reflection groups, some infinite families and these exceptional groups. Okay, so that was just to say what these complex reflection groups are. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then transpositions, the analog of that is reflections. So now, uh, what is a Coxeter element? That's going to be the analog of the long cycle. So an element in a complex reflection group is regular if its eigenvector is not on any hyperplane of the reflections of the group. And then a Coxeter element is a regular element of largest primitive order. Which, and this order is the Coxeter number. So yeah, that's, I think it's better just to see them for this example. So, so for the symmetric group, Coxeter elements are long cycles. For GD1N, for this wreath product, the, the Coxeter elements look like this. And maybe you see that if you look at the support of this permutation matrix, it's a long cycle. And for this um, subgroup, GDDN, this is what a Coxeter element looks like. So if you, <clears throat> so, sorry. <clears throat> if you look at the support of this um, matrix, it's of this permutation matrix, it's like an n minus one cycle and you have a fixed point here. The n is a fixed point. Okay, <clears throat> okay so here um, was this result of factorizations into transpositions of the, long, of the long cycle of arbitrary length and you get this nice generating function. If W is a well-generated complex reflection group of rank N, and you look at factorizations of a Coxeter element into K reflections, that's the analog of this number T and K, then the shortest ones are of length N, and they have this product formula, which is the rank factorial over the size of the group and a power of the Coxeter number. And this was, it was proved by Deline. Uh, I mean, you know, it was in a letter, uh, and then Bessis, David, David Bessis did a full proof in a, in, a, in a very long paper in the annals. Um, and that is very interesting history. Uh, but Chapuis Tump in 2012 looked at the case where you look at the generating function of these uh, ref, uh, factorizations into reflections. And they found this beautiful uniform formula where R is the number of reflections and R star is the number of reflecting hyperplanes. So it's really, really beautiful. You get a uniform formula for all these exceptionals all, and for these infinite families. And they proved it using characters and, 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 and recently Theo de Ropolos give a kind of a, give a uniform proof. Okay, so that's Cox, so that, so, okay, so now, um, now I wanna tell you what the analog is, what's the analog of the number of cycles. So you can think of, in a sense, you can think of the number of cycles as the fixed space dimension of a permutation matrix. Because here I have this, this permutation, this permutation matrix, and uh, you're gonna, f you, you, you have three degrees of freedom. You fix, every, you fix vectors that look like this. 
A, B, A, C, A, B, because here I have the same variable for in one, three, five, because I have this three cycle and um, I have uh, the same variable for two and six. So, so you could think of the number of cycles as a fixed space dimension of the, of the permutation matrix. So in, 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 for these monomial matrices, these infinite families, um, you can get the cycle type by, um, by take, so you, you, un underlying you have a permutation matrix, so you could look at this, its cycles. And for each cycle, you could take the product of the entries of each cycle, and this, this gives you a dth root of unity. And, you could, and, and then you can associate, I mean, then you can put each cycle in a, in a box by depending on what root of unity you get by doing this. So you can associate to U a d tuple of partitions where the ith partition just tells you the cycles uh, whose product gives you an ith root of unity. The product of the entries on that cycle gives you an ith root of unity. Okay, so, um, so, so for example, here is a, um, a five by five permutation. And let's look at this um, two five. So I have a, I have a transposition, I'm, I'm sending two to five. From five to two, and if I multiply the entries, um, if I multiply the entries two and five, I have c to the four. Can you see when I highlight something? Or okay, so I have z to the four. So the weight of that cycle, since these are cubic roots of unity, is z to the one. So the weight here would be one. And if you take the three cycle and you multiply the entries, you get uh, you get you get one. You get z to the zero. So this cycle would have weight zero, and this cycle would have would have weight one. So the cycle type here would be, um, well, would be three, the partition three, comma the partition two, and the rest would be empty. And the dimension of the fixed space is how, however many cycles you have of weight zero. Okay, and that's going to be my analog of the number of cycles. Okay, so I've told you. About the statistic, I'm going to keep track of when I move here to the to complex reflection groups is going to be fixed space dimension. How many cycles have weight zero? Okay, how about the change of basis? So let's see the results. So this was Jackson's result. Okay, when we take permutations with two factors and we change basis and we get this, this nice formula. Here is what a Coxer element looks for this wreath product. Okay, and it looks like an end, it looks like an end cycle. Uh, if you forget about this, this, this complex reflection group. So now I'm going to count A prime PQ is going to be the number of factorizations of a fixed Coxeter element, like the one above, into two factors of fixed space dimension P and Q, respectively. Okay. And if you look at the generating polynomial, if you change the base, if you do a change of basis, you, you, you see a nice coefficient. Okay, so again, you should not expect, uh, on, on the left-hand side, you should not expect nice formulas for these coefficients. The leading term has a product formula. It's like an analog of the Narayana number, like a type D Narayana, like a, for D equals two is the type B Narayana number, but in nothing nice in general. But when you change the basis, you get this, this, this binomial coefficient. And what is this, what is the change of basis? Instead of the binomial, you go into this like falling factorial, like falling factorial by D. So you take X minus one, X minus one minus D and X minus one minus D times R minus one. So you just subtract D every time. And that, and that does the, that, that does the trick. Any questions about this result? And now for K factors, if you, so here is the analog of the symmetric group. So you get these M's that count some sets and they have nice recurrences. So now if you factorize a, a Coxeter element into K factors where you keep track of the fixed space dimension of each factor, um, if you do the same change of basis, now this like D falling factorial, you get the same M's from the symmetric group. Okay, so that's um, so so, any, so okay, so so that's that's our for this infinite family. That's our first main result. Um, so about the proof. So this is let's, this is a long slide. Maybe I think maybe it fills Sarah's rule of, of for, for stars, But let's let's look at it. So so how how about, how could you prove it? You you could prove it using characters, uh, and that's that's kind of straightforward uh, um, 
and and you get a, and you see why the base pops up. But but we prefer to give a combinatorial proof. Just uh, um, so um, so we rewrite the so instead of doing x to the p, we do x times d plus one to the p. And because when we do that, the, the on the other side you get a binomial instead of this like d. Um, this kind of subtracting d every time. Um, so, so we so we just kind of we, we prove this. We we just we send x to x to d plus one, um, and we interpret the left hand side as a cycle coloring. Okay, so remember before when we went over this best proof of of Olivier, we we had we had p cycles and we had x to the p. So it's to each cycle, each of those p cycles, we gave a color of one up to x. So now we have to give it a for each of these weights, these cycles of weight zero, we have to give it a color of going from one all the way to x. We have we have x one, we have sorry, we have x one d plus one colors. So we have these like special color, the one, and we have these d strips of colors. Okay, so so this the coloring scheme is a little bit it's it's, it's, a, little, it's a bit involved, but you um, for everything that has weight zero, you color it with these d strips of colors. And for everything that has non-zero weight, you just put this like extra color, like this neutral color. And then you just keep track of how you color things. Okay, so you do you do this coloring scheme, and uh, and then you this you get these colored factorizations of this of this wreath product, and we and you can project them into colored factorizations of an of, of an n cycle in SM. Okay, and then you just count pre-images, and and out, out pops the result. So we saw, somehow reduce it to the symmetric group result. By doing a projection, um, and because of the, because the symmetric group result sort of has a combinatorial proof, although it's quite involved, the whole thing you could say the whole thing has a combinatorial proof for this infinite family. So, any questions about uh, the the proof, the proof technique? Um, Actually, um, maybe I misunderstood Graham's question in the chat. He just said he wanted to make sure d equals one recovers S n. Graham, did you mean just in the GDRN scenario, or you mean in um, Alejandro's main theorem? Uh, I mean in the theorem. I just want, I was just kind of a personal sanity check. I just wanted to see, make sure that D equals one actually <laughs> did that in the formula. Yes. Yeah, so, so, Alejandro, so, can you go back to the main theorem? Yes. So, so uh, I when you plug before, but I forgot. Yes, <clears> when you plug in D equals one, you you do you do recover the the the, the, the symmetric group formula. Um, uh, so, I mean, sort of, it's shift. You would expect, sort of, it's shift here. The change of basis is shifted because it's not x choose p. But, uh, but the thing is that um, you can you can just multiply. Uh, so, so, so sorry. So, um, uh, I mean, a permutation in a symmetric group always has cycles. So here, this p one up to p k starts at one. But here, you can have elements that have no cycles of weight zero. So this actually starts at zero. Mm. So that explains that, 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 so you do recover it. And if you're worried about this X minus one, instead of X, you can just multiply everything by, by X one, X two, X K. Oh, cool. Thanks. So you do recover it. And, and for D equals two, you would get the type D result. Okay. Uh, so, so there's another infinite family. This, so I want to tell you what happens there. So this GGDN. So how much time do I have? Um, I have maybe fifteen minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's recall what this other infinite family is. So it's just a it's a subgroup of GD1n. So it's those monomial matrices where the product of the dth roots of unity is one. And at d equals two, this is the this is type d. Um, so a Coxeter element in this case looks like this so if you squeeze if you project to the underlying permutation it's an n minus one cycle in SN. okay so um so let's look at factorizations of the let's go back to the symmetric group so let's look at factorizations of the n minus one cycle in SN. so so here maybe kind of a discussion that arose at like at the end of the pre seminar if you're factorizing something that has that it's not just a long cycle. Um, you, I mean, you have to worry about like whether what you're counting is connected or not, whether you're connecting is, is transitive or not. So, so if you want to get a nice answer, you should consider transitive factorization. So you want the factors 
to move all the elements of one up to n. Because if, if, for, if everything has n as a fixed point, you might, it's, it's really just a, a factorization of n minus one cycle in Sn minus one. So you just have to keep track of that. Okay, so you, only, you don't wanna consider that case. You want, you, want this, you want the factors to move, even move n, okay? So you, so, you, so, you card, so you know that you're dealing with the connected object and not just the joining two of the previous cases, okay? So, so, so transitive here is the key. If you wanna keep track of the number of cycles, again, we're in, it, we're in the symmetric group, we, we, have to, we, had, we had to give these results and we, could, we didn't find it in the, in the, in the literature directly. Um, so if you look at the journey function, out comes the same and you change basis to, 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 to binomials out comes these numbers, the same m's, okay? And our proof here uses characters in for, for general k. So a problem here is please find the bijective proof of this uh, so that, so that uh, yeah, okay, that, that, would be, that would be great. Okay, so now, um, so definitely for, for the symmetry, for factorizations of an n minus one cycle in Sn, we had to look at transitive. So we better think of transitive in, in this in this in this coxeter group GGDN. So we are we're going to say that a factorization uh, or, or, or a group of elements here are transitive if the if the subgroup acts transitively on um, like I have the I have the vectors ej, but like if I scale them by any root, okay. And this is good because. Uh, um, we, we, we're, at the end, we're going to project to the symmetric group. So a factorization of this co of a coxeter element is transitive if and only if the projection in Sn is transitive. So we know that we are not losing any, any information. So, um, so if you didn't like this first definition, think of it as you want to make sure that when you the underlying uh, factorization in the symmetric group is transitive. And there's a there's a recently um, um, uh, Yes, so recently uh, uh, so th there was a, like a different notion of transitivity for this group and, and, and uh, by that Dustin Ross and, and, and a collaborator. Uh, um, so that came up like, like, I think last, last month. Okay, so now we're gonna look at factorizations of a fixed Coxeter element. Uh, we look at transitive factorizations into K factors where we keep track of the fixed space dimension of each factor. And now, if we do a change of basis, you see here we have x1 to the p1 all the way xk to the pk. If we do a change of basis, out comes the same m's. But now the change of basis is not this d, this falling factorial by d, but this, but almost like you, you subtract by d every time here. But here you kind of skipped, you subtracted a d actually. Okay, so, so it skips a little bit here. Um, okay. Um, okay, so that's, so, so, and the proof is we project to Sn, but because, so it's a coloring scheme here is a little bit more, a slightly bit more involved, but, but we, we have a coloring scheme and we project to colored factorizations of an N minus one cycle in Sn, and we use the symmetric group result. But because the symmetric group result is using characters, this is not completely combinatorial. So that's why I, I, it'd be really nice to have a combinatorial proof of the symmetric group result. Okay, so now we can, so we saw these two change of basis. So what's, what is, can we think of this change of basis in a more uniform way? Um, and what seems to be happening is that the change of basis into this like X minus EI stars where these EIs are, stars are the co-exponents of the group. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Just to, so, um, so complex reflection groups are exactly those groups uh, where the invariance, the, 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 the ring of invariance is a polynomial ring on these, uh, so, so you, 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 you can write it as a polynomial ring on these, on, on these uh, FIs, and uh, there are several choices of these FIs, but, but if the degrees are invariant, and these are called the degrees of the group. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so for the symmetric group, you, 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 if, if G is the symmetric group here, for example, you could get the elementary symmetric functions, and if you get the degrees, you would get the degrees one, two, three, and so on, which are the degrees of the, of the, of this, of the symmetric group, and, um, um, but there's other invariants related to the ring and, uh, and this, these are related to the ring of co-invariants and these are called the co-exponents. And for the symmetric group, the, the co-exponents and the exponents uh, agree, uh, but here are the co-exponents for the, 
for the, the first infinite family, the wreath product. So you see, we remember we saw x minus one, x minus one minus d, x minus one minus two d. And this is exactly what we're seeing there in that basis. And in for, for this subgroup GDDN, where we have this weird jump, the co-exponents have that weird jump. So we have one plus d, one plus two d, all the way to one plus n minus two d, and then we have this little different one. Okay. And um, yeah, and there's some, this, this, if you put the degrees of the, or the, the, or the, um, or the, or, or the co-exponents, you, you get some nice generating functions of, or, over the group, um, also by fixed space dimension, but that's not important. Okay, so, um, so it seems that this change of basis is, is involves the, these co-exponents. So here's summary of the results. So, um, so, so, so the, here is the result for the symmetric group, uh, which contains, because you're keep, we're keeping track of k factors, you can um, specialize, uh, if a permutation has n minus one cycles, it's a reflection, it's a transposition. So it contains this transposition result if you, if you, if you, if you increase k. So there's this nice result of Jackson where these m's come that count some sets. Um, if you define this change of basis to involve these, these co-exponents, you could say, well, and if you count factorizations by fixed space dimension, you can say, well, when, when does this work? When does this change of basis work? That you get the m's here. So it works for the infinite family. And we have algebraic and combinatorial proofs using characters and using this coloring scheme. You can try this change of basis and it works. It doesn't work for all complex reflection groups. I, I gave you this, they have a, this finite classification, but it works for a bunch of the, those that have rank two and some of uh, rank three, but it fails for some groups. Of, of, so in particular, one of the ones for the infinite family. So, so it doesn't quite cover everything, but we already kind of knew that because there's no transitivity condition here. Um, if you look at this infinite family, if you look at transitive factorizations, you get, you, you get these co-exponents again on the change of basis. So I think we, when we set up to do this with Joel, we wanted to get a uniform formula for all complex reflection groups like that, like, like, that, like the Chapuis-Stum formula. And we, we're not quite there yet, but there, there seems to be something happening. But if you kind of use the right combination of transitive and co-exponents in the right order, uh, but we don't, but we don't, uh, but we don't have that yet. But and uh, and here I would say that we have it. I think not not complete not a complete combinatorial proof because of this symmetric group result that's not quite combinatorial. Um, okay. Well, thank you. And yeah, I might, I might sorry, but thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, Alejandro. And does anyone have any questions? You can post in the chat or unmute yourself. I have a question. I also have to leave in a few minutes. I'm sorry, I really enjoyed the talk. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, I was wondering, do you have an idea what a, like if you take S in reef something besides a finite cyclic group, do you have any intuition as to what might be a coxeter element? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, not, not on top of my head. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, no worries. Yeah, it just kind of came to mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we might have looked at, uh, so, 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 so these, these monomial matrices have three parameters and uh, not all of them are complex reflection groups. And I think we looked at, other combinations to see what what results we get, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you can get nice generating functions. But uh, so maybe in that sense, th th there there's a notion of Coxeter element, or there's something called a quasi Coxeter element that's mm -hmm. more general. Um, so in that sense, we for those we you, you could, but but uh, but yeah, but maybe but, but but for your specific question, maybe not not not, not, not so clear, but uh, yeah. Um, cool. Well, thanks again. Sorry, I've got to run. I really enjoyed the talk. So. <laughs> see ya. You might unshare your slide so you can see who's raising their hand. Or... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was curious how much of the representation theory of the Shepard-Todd groups is being used here. 
or could um, be used? So, so, uh, so I guess when we did that verification at the end of trying to see what what, what uh, um, had the change of basis, we, we had to use the characters of each group, but we, we did it we did it case by case. And so, uh -huh. so uh, I mean, so, so the so 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 I guess our motivation is this uniform formula by Shapuistump, which was first proved case by case, but then recently was given a uniform proof uh, using uh, so some so so we. So it'd be nice if you could use those, those techniques that of the tail that Ropol is used to, 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 to tackle what we're doing. But maybe once we have a uniform formula, if there is one. Um, but yeah, our, our, our paper has like nine pages of tables of characters for these verifications at the end for these exceptional types. And yeah, and not, yeah case by case. Yeah. Great, if there are no more questions. Oh, okay, <laughs> um, so no more questions, then let's thank Alejandro again. Thank you very much.